This is the object detection neural network that I had drawn in the first part of this series. Essentially, it shows that you have a backbone neural network using which you get the feature maps from different depth levels. Here I am showing three different depth levels using the green color. And for each feature map, you have a corresponding detection hat. I had also mentioned that in the more modern object detection methods, before the features are passed to the head, they are refined using another neural network, which we call the neck. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be ignoring the neck. As the primary purpose today is to create and understand various aspects of the detection head. So whether the features are passed directly from the backbone or they are refined feature maps by the neck, it doesn't matter to us. Also in another tutorial on this channel uh, in this series, for the image processing and augmentation, I had shown you how to resize the image to a fixed size input to the neural network. In all my code snippets, I'll be using 416 by 416 as a size of input image to the backbone. Let's also give proper shape to our input image. The first dimension is for the batch. Second is for the number of channels. It's a color image, so the number of channel is three. Next dimension is for the height and the last is for the width. Height and width are same. Let's look at the dimension of the feature maps as well. The feature maps that are near the input image will be called the low level feature and would be of shape 1, 128, 52, 52. The number of channels are 128 and the image has been down sampled to 52 by 52. The next feature map are called mid level features and the number of channels will be 256 and the width and size are further reduced to 26 by 26. Finally, the last feature map will be the high level feature maps and the number of channels are 5, 1, 12 and the size is 13 by 13. As you can see, the deeper we go in the backbone, the size of the feature map reduces the width and height, but the number of channels are increasing. Now, instead of using an actual backbone, I have created a fake module that outputs these feature maps because the purpose of this tutorial is to focus on the head, on the detection head and not on the other components. And this is a, just for experimental and educational purposes. Note that the result of the forward method in my fake backbone is something called fake backbone result. It is a named tuple that I have defined that contains the three feature maps that will be written by the backbone. You can appreciate that instead of using a list or a regular tuple, writing your code like this makes it more readable and less error prone. If I was returning a list of tensors, then the caller must know the first element is high level feature map or a low level feature map. But using a name tuple, there is no confusion. Let's create an object of this fake, fake backbone. I am passing a fake image of dimension 1, 3, 4, 16 by 4, 16. We talked about it earlier that my image is going to be of this size. And here is a desired high level feature map. Again, note that because of the named tuple usage, I can simply dereference the result and the ID will also give me some intelligence. So please use things like named tuple and type dictionary in Python language instead of using lists and, and, and tuples and raw dictionaries. And similarly, I have access to the mid and low level feature maps like this. Now I'm going to use only high level feature maps as the primary example to create our detection head, but I will do it in such a way that the same detection head definition would work with other feature maps as well. This is how the feature maps of size 13 by 13 will look like. Uh, note that there are 512 of them. On the screen, I have only shown you the first channel. You can also call these cells in this 13 by 13 uh, grid uh, or a reduced image a pixel. But I personally prefer to call them cell instead of pixel, even though they do represent the original image after some transformation. The indexing starts from the top left. 
Here is an example of how you would refer to a cell or a pixel in this feature space. 1 comma 5 means y is equal to 1 and x equals to 5. So we are essentially at a second row from the top and sixth column from the left. Now we want to pass this feature map to our head neural network and make predictions about the bounding boxes. The most important thing is to note that the predictions have to be of fixed size. So here is what we will do for now. We will start by making a statement that we will be predicting three boxes at every cell in the screen. For every box, there will be four numbers that will be predicted. These four numbers could be the corners of the box, coordinates of the box or the offsets from the ground truth box. We'll go over these details in another tutorial. For now, the important thing is that the, the, there will be four real numbers to predict for each box in the cell. And since we have three boxes per cell, we'll be looking at predicting 12 numbers. But we also want to predict one additional number that will tell us the probability or score indicating if there is an object in that box or not. So instead of 12, now we have 15. Now, we also need to predict the classes uh, of the objects that are in that box. So assume that we are working with a data set of three classes. So now for every box, we also need to predict three real numbers that tell us the probability or score for each possible class. So instead of predicting directly a class ID or class number, we, we use three numbers and, and every number will give a probability or a score for the possible class. So the total number of real numbers predicted for each cell will be 24. Now I have talked about 24 numbers to be predicted for one cell. And here we have 169 cells since the feature space is 13 by 13. And the total number of predictions will be 4056. But now the question is what kind of layer you should use in your neural network, in your head. Uh, by the way, we could also use fully connected layer with 4056 neurons or we could use a convolution layer with 24 channels where we will do it in such a way that the output feature is still 13 by 13. In this domain, we actually work with fully convolution neural networks. So we will opt for 24 channel output like this. So you can see that 13 by 13 is still the size of the grid but the number of channels have gone down from 5, 1, 12 to 24. Let's write some code to achieve this. Here I have a detection head module or a layer that takes the number of input channels, number of boxes per cell we want to predict, and the number of classes. And you can see the calculation for number of predicted channels. It is the same what I showed to you earlier. But here, now I have written it using some variables instead of hard coding the number of boxes per cell and number of classes. And finally, we add a convolution layer. Note that the number of predicted channels will be the output channels of the convolution layer. We'll be using kernel size of one, which will help preserve the width and height of the feature space, essentially to be the same as that of the input to this network. In this case, of high level features will still be predicting feature size 13 by 13, but the channel will be 24. And here is how the forward method would look like. So in some ways you can see that our detection head is simply a wrapper on the convolution layer for now. It, 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 we will do a little bit more uh, on it in later tutorials. That's why I have wrapped the convolution layers like this. We'll add some more layers essentially. So uh, the way it is right now, you could have directly used a convolution layer as such. Here is how I will create the object for the detection head, specifying the number of channels, number of anchors and number of classes. As you can see that passing high level features to it will return a tensor of 1, 24, 13 and 13. By the way, the same detection head class will be used for mid level and high level features. The objects for these head networks will differ in the number of input channels that you will pass. 
Here I have used the same number of boxes per cell as that of high level detection head. However, it is not required. You can always use different number of boxes per cell for different feature maps. But of course, the number of classes should remain the same. Let's look at the predictions made by the detection head for the high level features. The dimension is 1, 24, 13, 13. Essentially what you see right now on the screen, there are 24 of these. The 24 channels are going to represent our predictions for the three boxes per cell. Let's see them in a different arrangement to help visualize and make intuitive sense. The 24 channels in three rows. Every row has eight feature maps. Let's understand the prediction for the first cell. The first row will be responsible for the first box. The first rows of the first four channels will be for box coordinates. The first cell of the fifth channel will be for objectness. The first cell for the three channels will be for the class. Second row will be for the second box. And as should be clear, the third row will be for the third box. We are talking about only the first cell here. What I have shown you are the three boxes in the first cell. Now, visually we can understand which cells and which channels are going to predict information about which box, but how would we do it programmatically? How would we access this kind of information using the program? Let's first see the output of the detection head for the high level features again. You can see that there are 24 channels. But this layout or shape of tensor is not optimal for our needs, especially during training. And so we first reshape our prediction like this. Here I have used INOPS. I have a dedicated tutorial on my channel if you're not familiar with INOPS. And it will show you how you can reshape, permute, squeeze, unsqueeze, etc. using an explicit and readable code thanks to INOPS. The reshaping or rearrangement here gives us a tensor of five dimension look at the predictions of the HL detector were of four dimensions. The second dimension in this new five dimensional tensor is the number of boxes per cell, which is three. And the third and fourth will be used to go to a particular cell, meaning that you can do some indexing. And eight is the prediction per box per cell. So here is an example in which I'm going to get the prediction for the three boxes for the cell at one five. One here is the Y index or the height and five is the X. You can see that this indexing is now made possible because we reshaped our tensor. You can then get the coordinates or the offsets for the boundary box like this objectness and classes out of the tensor of length 8. Or you can always separate them using this style of indexing. Here we have the coordinates or the offsets for all the boxes in the in all the cells in the feature map. This is how you would get the objectness and finally you will get the classes. And now you have the three different tensors representing the coordinates, objects, and objectness and the classes. And you can compute the loss for them separately. We'll talk about the losses in the separate upcoming tutorials, but now you know that this reshaping will help you isolate the predictions for various things associated with the boxes, things being the coordinates, objectness, and the classes. As mentioned earlier, you need sepa this separation during training. But during prediction or the test stage, we don't need them. So for that, we can reshape the output of the detection little differently, something like this. Here we are saying that for high level features, we'll be making total of 507 boxes and every box has eight numbers associated with them. You know by now what those eight numbers are. These will be fed to the NMS uh, algorithm during the test phase. Now what I have explained so far using the high level features will be same 
for the other features. The number of detections will be different as the mid-level feature and the low-level features have more cells in them or pixels in them. Uh, there are few more things I wanted to cover regarding the detection head, but we'll do so in a separate dedicated tutorial. The link to the notebook that has all these snippets will be in the description of this tutorial. And with that, I thank you for the time that you have spent here. Hope it has been helpful. Bye for now and see you in another tutorial. Bye-bye.